speaking. Um, we have three items. Oops, sorry. We have, have three items on the agenda um, with an with a amendment I did Friday afternoon. But uh, first item is a public hearing and recommendation for second reading of rezoning requests. Number 795 um, by Christopher and Melissa Lane to rezone one acre located at 126 Argosy, Lane, Argosy Drive near Somerville, TMS number 144-01-00-023 from multifamily residential R4 to single family residential manufactured housing district R1MA. And I will open the public hearing. Yes, sir. This is a one acre lot located at 126 Argosy Drive. Argosy's just off of Embassy. Um, this area, as you can see on the zoning map, is another large chunk of property that's zoned R4 multifamily, but has developed historically with a mix of single family, site built homes, as well as manufactured homes. So the owners purchased the property and they intended to place a manufactured home on the lot. They've already ordered the manufactured home. It's ready to go. Uh, they came in for their setup permit and were told that the property was not zoned for manufactured homes. So they have come in and requested the rezoning. Again, it's in an area that is dominated by a mix of the two. It meets the lot size requirements for R1MA and uh, is in an area that, that supports this type of use. So planning staff uh, recommended approval to the planning commission who have also unanimously recommended approval of the rezoning to R1MA. Thanks. Any other comments on this rezoning request? None appearing. I will close the public hearing and ask if council has any. Mo motion to approve, and I have a question after that. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? What is the significance of the red square? That's not the lot, is it? That is the lot. Yeah. So how do they get access to Argosy Drive? Then? They have an easement through the property that they touches have. Argosy Drive. Yes. So that easement's been given. There is an easement, yep. That's, it's already that, a platted lot. How do they get to Argosy Drive if that's? Yeah, it's already a platted lot and they, they already had access. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. That was going to be my question. Thank you, Ms. Hargan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion and a second. Uh, we've had the discussion. All in favor? We are unanimous. Three in favor. Next item on the agenda is, uh, I'm sorry, this is my next item, so I knew there was something. So the next item on the agenda is discussion of ordinance number 17-09, which is an ordinance to supplement the code of ordinances, Dorchester County, South Carolina, to add a new section 38.2 at SEC to Article 1, Chapter 38, street sidewalks and other public places to provide for the regulation of connectivity to streets, roadways under the jurisdiction of Dorchester County. And gentlemen, this, this kind of came up for me as a result of the recent discussion we've had of Community Road and, and quite frankly, the discussion we had in, in executive session to the point that we had in effect a, not, and I would say this, not necessarily applied the entire ordinance, but looked at the ordinance from a standpoint of a traffic study and approved this. When it became very obvious to us as we began discussing this, this would never have been approved had it been a county item because the road didn't meet those standards. Planning and zoning is in the process of working on a tiered structure for roadways. I think it's, um, and, and I may, I'm, I'm going to look back here and talk to Mr. Carraher because he and I had this discussion, a three-tiered um, that, that's based on the levels of traffic on those roads. And what I'd like us to consider from the standpoint, and I don't necessarily any action tonight because they actually need to complete this part of the ordinance um, or the recommendation for us, but that is to make certain that we remember this and we um, amend the ordinance. I will be asking to amend the ordinance 17-09 to refer to the section in the planning ordinance that says, okay, we will meet the basic county requirements from a connectivity standpoint. I don't think we need to necessarily repeat it in that ordinance, but a reference to it. And it really is more to do with not us. We will remember this, I'm sure, having sat in there for several hours discussing this. <laughs> but in the future, when there's other folks sitting here, there is a reference point that goes back to say, we'll let you connect, but you've got to meet a basic minimum of a county standard for the road. Because quite frankly, if we don't do that, we're on the hook for a, uh, a municipality that's not willing to take that road in. We're the ones that are going to be asked to pay for it and maintain it. This will only be a reference to hopefully a, a piece that we um, choose to uh, choose to approve here in the future. Um, that's all I had on that item. Is there any discussions of my discussion? By all means, I, I would welcome it. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question. This, I'm presuming, is pro prospective relative to where we are right now with community. Is it, that correct? It's, it's definitely prospective because yeah. that tiered, it, it may not have, well, it would have always been, but the initial discussion was just to say, hey, it's got to meet um, county standards. But now that I was made aware that the county is working on that standards internally for us to say, look, you, you, this this road is a community road. It handles 50 cars. You're going to now put 150 on it. The road has to be upgraded. This will be a requirement in the future for that developer to upgrade that road to handle that new tra okay. level of traffic. That's thank that's, you. That's what my goal is, at least, uh, if if that passes this committee and then through council. I do have one question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. But my question really is for John, our attorney. John, the way this is written, can or may a town or a city or the state um, take, take exception to what we're doing? Is this a legal document? I know it is in the county, as far as the county road, but can they trump us in any way? Probably. As long as this is our road. They cannot the trump a county road. <clears throat> town wants to make it a town road. You're right. But I mean, if, if somebody's double trapped on our road, I have no reason to believe that we cannot regulate that. So if we deny access for whatever reason to our road that the town or the state or who, whomever, we have the right to do that under this you don't ordinance. Have the absolute right to do anything. Well, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, if they wanted to challenge it this. And Ms. Target, let, let, let me be clear. My, my goal isn't necessarily to deny it. My goal is to make certain that that developer understands that they will need to improve that road to be able to put their development or whatever it is on that road. Yeah, I'm not at no time was this a denial. At every time, this was an, a request to put skin in the game to improve it to a level of service that our constituents right. would expect. The reason I ask, there, uh, we may have another one of those coming up is Somerville coming up in my district, and I wanted to make sure that this is a legal document, and it's our road, it's our county road. That's the reason I asked the question. Certainly, I, I, I look forward to having that discussion with you as well. Thank you, sir. It, it's coming. Oh. Chairman, uh, Kira, am I correct, and Jason, this is part of the new land development regulations that you guys are working on? That's correct. So, so you guys know, before we roll into the planning workshop we're going to have in a couple weeks, um, this is part of the amendments that we're making to our land development regulations. Our land development regulations are very old, and as we update them, these are the types of things that will be included in it. So staff has been, the planning staff and the public work staff have been meeting almost every Friday to go through section by section to update uh, our land development regulations ourselves instead of hiring someone, because we know how things work in the county and how we want them to work. So this was a good um, start for us to be able to work through the land development regulations and then work on the zoning ordinance. And, and Mr. Target, be, I, I'm from, from my standpoint, um, I wanted to certainly wait on this tiered approach. If this becomes an issue that we need to bring before this committee again and before council um, under the pending ordinance doctrine, that's, a, that's certainly a, a, a I, I think the way the ordinance is written, when we actually read the entire ordinance and apply that entire ordinance, which is what we did, not just the one section, it becomes a little bit more clear. Um, I'm trying to make it crystal clear in the future, referring to another section that actually not only makes it clear, but defines what that clarity is, is what my goal is. All right, thank you. Any other motions? Move we adjourn? Second. There is a motion and a second. All in favor? We are adjourned. I, can I close that public hearing?
Uh, I'm going to call the Dorchester County Council Water and Sewer Committee uh, to order, and we have one item on the agenda, and it's a recommendation for second. second. As a motion of floor and a second in discussion. I have a comment. Uh, Mr. Hargett, go ahead, sir. This is a very good agreement, and never let it be said that council didn't look at uh, cost sharing with a developer because the developer is paying 97% of this, the county's paying 3%. And if ever I saw an impact fee, that's one. So that, that's a, I like it a lot. Thank you, Mr. Hargett. Uh, any other remarks? All in favor? Six. All opposed? Six to nothing. Do I have an answer in motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion on floor and a second for adjournment. All in favor? Six. Thank you, gentlemen. We adjourn. Uh, we will start our regular meeting in about two minutes. I'm going to call the Dorchester County Council meeting to, uh, to order, and I would like to uh, make a remark before we get an invocation of the pledge. Um, we had, last Sunday a week ago in, in the western end of Dorchester County in St. George, we had a lot of sadness within our community. Uh, we lost two fine young men. Uh, one of them is Tony uh, Gaskins. Tony is the son of our councilwoman, Harriet Hallman, whose house burned to the ground. Uh, the second young man was William Stevens. Uh, he's the son of Judge Stevens and Barbara. We'd like to remember them and I'll continue in our prayers. And I also would like to thank our Dorchester County Fire and Rescue Squad, uh, our EMS people, and of course our coroner for the rapid response they did uh, and that early morning fire, and I uh, just want to thank you all so much. And I ask you to please stand for the invocation. Hey, Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, and we ask you to bless Harriet Hallman and her family for the loss of their son, Judge Stevens and Barbara for the loss of their son. <coughs> God, I know we're not supposed to ask why, and there's a reason for everything. And we ask you to bless this council as we make decisions for the people and by other people. We ask you to bless our service people. We ask you to bless our state. We ask you to bless our nation. We ask you to bless our president in trying times. And these things in God's holy name, pray, amen. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is a request to address council. We have two people. Mr. Thomas Fagon. I think Thomas. Okay. Thomas, giving you your address, we got your name. Thomas Fagan, 111 Ponderosa Road, Somerville, South Carolina. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Good to be back in front of you again. 
the same problem. We got an election coming up tomorrow and we're gonna look at spending a whole lot of money for yesterday's technology. I know that encyclopedias don't sell too well anymore because you can Google just about anything. I'm sure the libraries are gonna go that way in the next couple of years and we're getting ready to build a whole bunch of them. But uh, it's not the libraries. Libraries are good, parks are good. But it'd be real nice if I could get home in the evening. Orangeburg Road, Central Avenue, Jedburg Road, Mallard Road. It's, it's pretty much a nightmare. If you guys could give this a look and try to give us some help on this, because the traffic backs up. That traffic circle, I fought and fought. It works wonderful. But the traffic backs all the way up to the circle now from the light there in Knightsville. <laughs> so anything you could do to help us, we'd sure appreciate, because it's, it's taken it. The quality of life is diminishing by the day, and we're getting new subdivisions by the minute, seems like. All the woods are disappearing, and houses are going in everywhere. So it's not going to get any better unless we get some help. So please, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. And Mr. Fagan, just in response to that, I'll tell you this, and it's frustrating. The Orangeburg Road project, and maybe Mr. Carraher or somebody can correct me on this, but the last I was told is they are not looking at improvements to the Orangeburg Loop, and they would be DOT until 2036. And the, uh, you know, obviously the county's going to have to do something relative to the uh, maybe the next iteration of the one cent sales tax to prioritize it. But as it stands right now, and it's about $135 million project based on their numbers. And uh, it's it, obviously we is, you know, as a group are gonna have to really work to get funding for this and get it done substantially sooner than 2036. Because right at the crossroads where Mallard and Old Orangeburg. Yes, sir. In behind the Spink Station, you got acres and acres being cleared out for new subdivision. Right across the street, there's a new subdivision. Go across the street from it, and they're clearing out for a new subdivision. And right beside that, they got townhouses going in where people don't even have a yard between the houses. There's just a wall. So when we're packing people in this tight, and our infrastructure is already way behind, you know, if there's an emergency there, the ditches are deep and the roads are narrow, and there's no sides to get off on. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, David. I just wanted to follow up on, on one of the things, a couple things. As, as, you, as you said those street names, I wrote down SCDOT, 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 <laughs> writing down the DOT control roads on that list. But you mentioned the one cent sales tax. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, today it's 15 years into the 25 years, is that right, or tomorrow? Correct, today, or tomorrow. So, yeah. so tomorrow, we still have 10 years yet to go on that one cent sales tax as we initially did that as one of the first two counties, first county that actually implemented that one cent sales tax. Um, way back then, it looked like a good idea to go 25 years. Um, today, it, it doesn't look quite as good as it did then. And unless we can get the, the legislature to allow us to do something different, we're kind of hung up with that one cent sales tax at that point in time. We don't stop advocating um, the DOT to fix these roads, and you heard the conversation tonight. We, we have started, from a county standpoint, trying to hold the developers, um, making them put skin in the game. Um, we know for a fact, especially in that area, there's developers that have developed projects with zero skin in the game. I'm not going to let it go without a comment um, as long as I'm on council, so I promise you that. While you guys are rubbing elbows, you might shoot an elbow for us regular <laughs> citizens every now and again instead of for the developers. Please. Ms. Be uh, Peggy Bingo. Peggy Bangle, 114 Ravenwood Court. First, I echo, George, I echo your thoughts and prayers for Harriet and her family. I, that was a total shock to everybody, I think, and it's just still incomprehensible. I know we ask why. Tomorrow is the election. I, if you have not already voted, early voting, please do so. 
I'm not going to say encourage anyone to vote one way or the other, but if you don't vote, don't whine. That's, I've already voted, so I can whine. <laughs> the new machines are very user friendly. Those of you that voted absentee, they're not quite as user friendly as they will be tomorrow because you had to put the votes in an envelope because of state rules and whatever. They can't count any of the absentee ballots and still, until the polls close. They'll open them and feed them through the machine. When you come in to vote, you'll sign in like you normally did in the other system. You'll be taken to a machine. It'll be set for the precinct you're in. You'll make your selections, verify it, print it, walk over to the scanner, turn it upside down if you prefer, place it on it, and it'll take it right in. Your vote will be in there. That's all you have to do. Do not leave the voting po polling place with that piece of paper in your hands. Your vote will not be counted. And I'm sure there'll be at least one or two people that manage to escape in the whole county. And I'm going to just comment, just I didn't have this on my list, but traffic, taxes, and trash, the three T's are things that I hear about frequently, as I'm sure some of you have probably heard those topics on occasion. It took me 27 minutes to come from Trolley Road to here tonight. Just saying. And there were no accidents between here and there. It was just traffic. So we need to work on the traffic somehow, traffic studies to make it more efficient, more effective. I don't know how we're going to do that. It needs to be done. And if the roads aren't done until 2036, I'm not going to be here to see them, folks. So that's just probably the way it is. Advanced installment plan. As you know, I work part-time for the treasurer's office. And one of the things we have is the advanced installment plan, where if your taxes for 2019 are paid by January 15th, you can enroll in the taxes for next year's program and make six payments or five payments and a final payment, equal payments to where you don't your taxes will be paid, they'll put an escrow, be put in escrow, and you would not have to pay a whole lot of money in December. For those that were in the paper saying they didn't want to have to pay $24,000 in January, again next year, they can pay $2,000 a month or $4,000 every other month. We can customize those plans to where they have time to get their payments in. We have people paying as little as $15 every other month because they cannot afford the taxes in December. I encourage you for your people in your district that are compl complaining the most vocally to encourage them to try the, this plan. We can come talk to them. We can, they can enroll online, and it can be customized if they need it customized. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Pico. Next item is adoption of minutes from October the 21st, 2019 County Council meeting. So moved. Second. The motion on the floor and a second in discussion. All in favor? Six to nothing. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda is a resolution to honor the veterans of uh, World War II, and I'd like to read the resolution. And why I'm all this uh, talking about veterans, uh, on the 10th of uh, this month, uh, we are having a Veterans Day in St. George. We're having a parade and we're having a celebration. It's this, it's next, it's this Sunday, really, uh, November the 10th, and it starts at 2 o'clock in St. George, South Carolina, and it runs until 7. We're going to have uh, food, uh, uh, food vendors there at the courthouse in St. George. Uh, we're going to have a fireworks display at 7, and we got one high, highly priced rock band coming. I understand. Uh, what's the name of the band? East Coast Party Band. East Coast Party Band, and we will party in St. George on the 10th. I'm going to go to the resolution. Thank you so much. A resolution recognizing and celebrating the veterans of Dorchester County and its surrounding counties on the occurrence of the 2019 Dorchester County Veterans Parade and Celebration. Whereas throughout our nation's history, South Carolina men and women have put on the uniform of our armed forces and have sworn an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And whereas the brave men and women of our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Merchant Marine Service members demonstrated a resolute spirit and unmatched selfish, unselfishness, reminding us there are a few things more Americans than given of, of ourselves to make a difference in the lives of others. And whereas Veteran Day has been set aside as a federal, state, and county holiday to honor the American patriots who answered the call of duty, preserving our freedom, and often making the ultimate sacrifice. And whereas it is estimated that more than 15,000 veterans live in Dorchester County and over 400,000 live in the state of South Carolina. 
There are numerous local veteran services organizations who dedicate themselves daily to ensuring our veterans receive the benefits and entitlements they deserve. And whereas we can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to the heroic, heroic men and women who served, were wounded, perished, or remains mission in action as a result of their service. And whereas we continue to draw inspiration from the heroism and dedication of those who currently serve and sacrifice for the <coughs> ease of liberty, justice. And whereas the Dorchester County Veteran Affairs Parade and Celebration allows the citizens of Dorchester County and its surrounding counties to publicly demonstrate the pride and patriotism and they have all branches of service. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Dorchester County Council hereby honors American military veterans and all upon all citizens to honor these men and women who have answered the call of service to protect this great nation. Be it further resolved that upon adoption of this resolution, originally shall be presented to Dorchester County veterans at the Dorchester County Veterans Parade and Celebration and a copy filed in permanent records of Dorchester County, South Carolina. Adopted the fourth day of November uh, 2019 by George H. Bailey, Chairman of Dorchester County Council, and attest to Tracy Langley, Clerk of Council. Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, approve adoption of this resolution. Second. There's a motion in the floor and a second in discussion. All in favor? Six to nothing. Thank you, gentlemen. But Mr. Chairman, I, Mr. One, one bit of discussion real quick, and I apologize. I was smiling as you were reading that. I'm thinking about my papa who passed away nine years ago at age 94. He grew up in Lincoln uh, County, North Carolina, never left except for the three and a half, four years when he was in the Pacific. He served as a uh, gunner's mate on an LST, which he swears was the worst job in the Navy. God bless him, and I think about him a lot. He was a very humble man and never talked about it. It was amazing. He never talked about his service like so many that served in that time, and it took his passing to find all the pictures and mementos to see what it was all about. But And thank you very much for what you've done tonight. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a comment. Um, my father was in the Second World War, rode on to the beaches of Okinawa in a tank and went through Okinawa. Uh, he was not injured, he came home safely, and I praise God for that. I also remember having several conversations with Mayor Berlin Myers about his, and he really would not talk about it much, but he would just say it was really bad. Thank you, Mr. Horgan. I appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is the uh, adoption of another resolution, <coughs> excuse me, confirming the intention of Dorchester County, South Carolina to be reimbursed for certain expenditures related to the acquisition of fire engines and equipment to be financed by lease purchase obligation amount not to exceed $3,500,000. So moved. Second. As Point of motion. order, did we vote did we formally resolve okay. that? Did we vote to resolve that? Did we do it? We're good. Okay, just want to make sure. All right. I knew, Mr. Ward, you would cover me on that. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. Glad just somebody's me. helping me up here. <laughs> Thank you. As you were, Mr. Ow. Chairman. Just so Bill doesn't look yeah. bad, I was asking him to make sure. I couldn't remember either. So, I, yeah, we're just. I, I may be a little double minded to tonight. Yeah. You know what they say the double minded man is unstable in all his all right. ways, Mr. Ward. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I glad you sit by me, Mr. Ward. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion on the resolution? All in favor? Six to nothing. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Let me get that out of my way. Yeah. I'm going. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> That's right. Since we did. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a public hearing um, on the 2019 Edward Burns Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program. I'll open the floor for public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Council, uh, 
Each year, the county has an opportunity to receive JAG funding. In this particular case, um, the Sheriff's special, Specialized Entry Team um, plans to use the funding so that they can purchase eight night vision monocular and helmet mount assemblies. Uh, this will assist them in performing their mission for specialized entry. And so uh, we're following the requirements of the grant, which uh, requires a public comment period, and that's the purpose for the public hearing. Any other person would like to speak? Hearing none, I close the public hearing. Do we need a motion? No, sir. No, I Next on the agenda is public hearing and second reading of an ordinance establishing the Oak Brook Redevelopment Project area, making certain findings and blight within the redevelopment project area, designing and defining redevelopment projects consistent of public improvements within the redevelopment project area, designating appropriate redevelopment projects costs, Approval of an overall redevelopment plan, provide for notice and public hearing in connection with the foregoing and other matters related thereto. I'll open the public hearing. Rebecca. Mr. Chairman, Council, uh, Section 31-7-10 outlines the Tax Increment Financing Act for counties, and it lays out how uh, the requirements for financing, using TIF funding to finance public infrastructure in a project area in a county. The law requires that a county create a redevelopment plan for the area they wish to re redevelop, have a public hearing on that redevelopment plan, and that they notice each of the taxing entities that are affected 45 days prior to the public hearing so that those entities can uh, address any changes that they would like to the plan or agree to participate or not participate in the plan. Uh, so we are here to have the public hearing on the Oak Brook Redevelopment Plan and to discuss what we plan to do in that area. The Oak Brook Redevelopment Project area is, as you can see on the map, it's in the hashed area. Uh, basically, you're looking at the areas between Sawmill Branch, Parlor Drive, the river and Midland Parkway is, is kind of the boundary on the, on the top. It also grabs the school district property, which is where Oak Brook Middle School and Oak Brook Elementary School are. So as I've mentioned to you guys before, tax increment financing is not a tax increase or an impact fee or a public-private partnership. It's a method for financing redevelopment in a blighted conservation or sprawl area in counties, and that's outlined by the state law what the, the funding can be utilized for. It allows a, a county to use the incremental increase in assessed value and property taxes to fund public infrastructure in a defined redevelopment area. It's a way that counties can fund public infrastructure projects without having to raise taxes. The plan is a broad plan and it envisions a 25-year TIF district, approximately $35 million uh, in redevelopment projects. $25 million of that will be bonded out in two different issuances, one being a $15 million issuance in the beginning, and the next will be a $10 million issuance later on once the revenues uh, come in and once the market will allow for a second issuance. Um, and the second issuance we, is for uh, public school projects for the school district. All projects require county council approval and will have to go through the county council uh, purchasing policies and any changes require that all of the taxing entities approve them. So anything that's not included in this plan now, if we want to add it later, has to be approved by each of the other taxing entities. And for us and for this particular um, taxing district, that is the town of Somerville, the county, and DD2. The redevelopment, the types of redevelopment projects that we have included are improvements to transportation infrastructure, improvements to streetscaping, improvements to public utility inf infrastructure, improvements to or construction of public buildings and environmental, culture, cultural, and recreational facilities, improvements to or construction of public school facilities in the redevelopment area. 
and I have an asterisk by that, the redevelopment plan that was presented to you guys and that was sent to the town and to the school district said uh, school facilities at the Oak Brook Elementary site and the Oak Brook Middle School site that after meeting with them last week, I believe it was Mr. Ward or the week before, they've asked that we make it a little broader and just say any public school infrastructure in the district in case in 20 years something new comes up that they, they may need help on in that district because it is a growing area. One of the things that I found out doing some research on this area is um, from the middle of the area, which would be in the middle between uh, Trolley Road and Latson Road, three miles out, there are 33,000 people li living within a, 30, within a three mile radius. 33,000 people living within a three mile radius of this one point. So I think this is a great area for us to do our first um, TIF district. Uh, to go a little bit more specific for the proposed projects, uh, what we all consider as pedest pedestrian safety and traffic calming, medians, sidewalks, lighting, things of that nature. Public utility or stormwater drainage infrastructure. Trail completion and connections. Uh, and those are just a, a short list of some of the projects that we know are already there and existing. Some projects we have TAP grants for. Some projects we're working with DOT and other entities on and we hope that this, will, this funding will be able to allow us to bridge the gap to get some of these projects actually going. Uh, improvements to the Somerville Soccer Club, and I've got some pictures that I'll show you guys later on that. Uh, the potential for a uh, new Latson Road Fire and EMS station. The town of Somerville, Bend on the Ashley project, that's the project that they have at the Justin Boat Landing that they would like to build an ecotourism site there. The potential library, if um, by chance this referendum does not pass or never passes, and we want to work with this, the library board to put a library there. This is something that funding could be used for. Parks and parks and parks improvements, and then potential public school projects. Just to show you some pretty pictures, I know everyone loves a good picture. This is an image that shows what mast arms and no power lines would look at this particular intersection. Another good picture, this is a a side shot of what the roads should look like with medians where it's appropriate and where DOT will approve them. Again, these are DOT roads, so obviously we have to get encroachment permits or approval from DOT to do any of these projects. Uh, this, this would be showing bicycle lanes, sidewalks, landscaping, medians, and uh, la landscaping island medians, um, so that the road is safer, but more pedestrian safe, more pedestrian safe, safer for bike, bikes and even uh, do some traffic calming. So the, the narrower some of the roads are, the better some of the um, turning lanes are, the better some of the stacking is in some of those areas. Hopefully that'll improve the traffic there also. One of the projects that we've already um, talked with the town and with DOT about participating in, you guys are all familiar with the Dorchester Road safety project that they're doing there where they plan to put a median and plan to increase the um, the turning lane as you're turning left onto Trolley Road. Well, we've um, worked with the town to talk about um, DOT, what, and I don't think there's anybody in the room that works for DOT, but usually they want to put a concrete island in the middle and it looks pretty horrible and it doesn't do anything to bring any sort of sense of place to an area. So do you, and they don't want to pay to, to do any landscaping because they don't want to have to maintain any landscaping. So we have talked with the town about the TIF district paying for the actual landscaping of the median and then the town um, paying for the maintenance of that median because a part of it would be in the town. One of our other projects is the Somerville Soccer Club project. This is a preliminary plan for it, showing extra parking, showing actual fields, um, improved drainage, fencing, and a championship field in the middle that would be turf that would allow us to attract more tournaments, that would allow the school districts to use the, the fields also for their soccer tournaments and soccer games, and potentially for our football too. So the next steps for this plan is second reading and public hearing today, uh, and then third reading on November 18th. On November 18th, we're also gonna have a reimbursement resolution for you guys so that we can go ahead and start doing some of the preliminary planning, especially for the soccer club improvements. If uh, we decide that we wanna do something on that site, they would love for us to do it between April and August of next year because that's when they don't, that's the least amount of playing that they have on those fields. So, We'd like to get the um, JD letter out and some of the surveying and, and topographic studies and things done on that site to make sure that we can do the project there and get that moving forward. 
and then we'll have to move forward in the, the bonding process. So, does anybody have any questions? Any questions, Ms. Vance? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Mr. David. So, so you mean to tell me, because I saw this on the internet, so it must be true. The interwebs? That this doesn't take money from schools? Because I saw on the internet this takes money from schools. Um, I, and it, in, in all seriousness, a, an example, I think, from a funding standpoint, I own a piece of property that is un, currently undeveloped and it's taxed at, and I have no clue, $10,000. It's now been developed and it has five, eight retail structures on it now. So my new tax bill is considerably more. That tax increment between five and the new tax bill is the money we're using to be able to bond this. Yes. So, so the five is still being utilized. It's still going to the, it, the whatever taxing that we're going to get it to begin with. Yes, sir. But the difference in the improvement, the difference in the base starting when this begins, and I don't know if there's a pending ordinance <clears throat> document in this one or not, but January um, 1 would be one. Okay. So when this begins and now ultimately is how, it's where the bonding money, the, 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 that's why bonds can be sold on this because there is a is a value increase over time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank so you. it uses that's why it's called incre tax increment financing. It uses the incremental increase in property taxes to fund public infrastructure infrastructure projects. So you are anticipating what the future growth in an area will be, and you're using that growth to fund projects <clears throat> in that area. Um, so it's it's the best example of bootstrap economics you can think of. You're, the growth in an area is funding the growth in that area, and you don't have to raise taxes in another area of the town or the county um, to pay for the improvements in that area. That's not what I read on the internet, so I just wanted to. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have Thank two you. questions. Yes, sir. What is the um, tax consequence to a currently platted subdivision with single family homes or townhouses? Will they incur any kind of tax increase regarding this? No, sir. So the, the there is no tax increase associated right. with the tax increment financing. The only increase in someone may have is the increase in property values. And I think we all hope that our property values go up and that there's, I can't control that. The county can't control that. So that's the only actual increase that someone would have. There are some words out there that say there's another tax increase from county council, but that's not true. That is not true. No, currently sir. platted homes. The second question. What, what is the estimated, I know you got a guess at this, when we might um, release or do this first bond issue? We would, li we would like to start in January. That's the, that is our, um, our process. We, we're thinking so in January. we would initiate that as a county council? Yes, sir. You'd have to give three readings in a public hearing. Okay. To it. So as early as January? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, uh, because of the uh, value in this district and mm -hmm. because of some of the projects that are coming online, it demonstrates enough revenue to be able to bond it out in the beginning instead of having to wait five or more years. To Any idea to of the amount maybe that we'll start with? 15 would be the, the most that we think we can. Using 15 the million? Yeah, using the modeling that we've used working with our financial advisors, we think about 15 is the most we're going to be able to get in the beginning. Okay. And so everyone understands, we're only going to be able to borrow whatever we can prove that is, that's going to be there. So the money has to, we have to know that it, that future growth is going mm -hmm. to be there. Or the bond markets, no one will, no one will buy the bonds. It, so it, there's, it is a, it's a great way of financing public infrastructure projects without having to raise taxes. You're right. Mr. Chairman, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, just want to commend Mayor Johnson and uh, Somerville Town Council. Mr. Mayor is back there this evening. Uh, commend Superintendent Pine, Dorchester School District 2, and of course Dorchester County Council for doing this. And this, these type projects are really long time coming to both uh, the town and the county. And Ms. Vance, you can correct me, but um, Greenville, Greenwood, North Augusta, Rock Charleston, Rock Hill. I mean, just there's some pretty incredible projects, some of which have been done in counties and towns smaller than ours successfully. And uh, this is a good opportunity. I think it's a good first step. And um, you know, one of the kind of hidden opportunities in the uh, TIF district would be the ability to use some of it for 
uh, matching funds to do additional projects. So there's some seed money that's kind of hidden, if you will, as part of that, that can do other projects, like the TAP grant, I think you had said. So there's some additional opportunities there. Yeah, as you mentioned, the communities that you talked about, any downtown or- Casey. Any, yeah, well, <laughs> um, any, any good projects or redevelopment projects that you can see across South Carolina has used TIF funding at least as one of their sources. And I say that because you use that TIF funding to then leverage other grants, other donations, uh, even partnerships with DOT or other funding sources like a recreation commission that most other counties have um, so, that, uh, so that your dollars go further. And that's the best way to do it. Then when you go into a, a if you when you go into DOT and you say, I want to do a project on Dorchester Road, you can say, I want to do a project on Dorchester Road. This is what we want to do, and this is what I'm bringing to the table. And unfortunately, a lot of times when we walk into the room and we're trying to get grants and get participation and partnerships and projects, we're not coming to the table with anything. Yeah. This gives us something to come to the table on all of those projects, because there are grant funding and different opportunities for partnership on each of the projects that we're talking about. The TIF will not fully fund that, but it gives the money that would enable us to qualify for these other sources of revenue and <laughs> grants, et cetera. Y yes, sir. Even for the TAP grants, we have three open TAP grants right now in that area, and this would allow us to close the gap on, on all three of them and get those going, uh, whereas now we're having to combine money from all three to one to try to get it completed. This was, would allow us to move forward. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, just very quickly, I want to commend staff. Ms. Vance, thank you very much for the hard work on this. Mr. Ward, we've been talking about this for a long time, and just be able to bring this together and work with the town and with the district to be able to do these things. This is some creative things that really we should have been doing a long time ago, but it just takes working together, and so appreciate the work y'all have done, because you can go to other places and see what they've done with these funding mechanisms, and it's made a difference. So I'm looking forward to it. It's very exciting. Thank you, Ms. Vance. Thank you. So um, I will tell you that the, ta the d other taxing entities, they're given 45-day no notices to respond whether they wish to participate or do not wish to participate. As of tonight, we've not heard from any of them that they do not want to participate, so that is great. Usually there is some conflict with one of the taxing entities that doesn't want to participate, so that speaks to the relationships we have with those two different taxing entities um, that we, we haven't had that type of conflict over it. So I'm excited about that. Um, I would ask that you guys give second reading to this ordinance with that one amendment to the line about school districts to make it a little bit broader so that um, if there's anything that does come up in that area that they can use that fund, those funds for that. Real quick question before we go to that vote, Mr. If, we need, if there was something that came up that we wanted to tweak this before third reading, what is, how cumbersome is that if there was? It would just need to be an amendment that council makes. I mean, ultimately it is a county council um, adoption. We would notify the two taxing entities. Okay. But once it's adopted, if there are any changes you want to, if you want to add, right. I mean, if we want to build an aquarium, um, we would need to go back to each of the entities. No aquariums. And talk to, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think of a random topic that was we, we purposely made the projects, um, the, the general list very broad so that if anything comes up in that area, we're allowed, we can use that money. Um, we can, if, something, if there's an opportunity that comes up and uh, say Colonial Dorchester wants to do something on their site, which I have actually talked to them and they, they're thinking about what they could do there, that money could be used if they want to partner with us for that. And but again, they have to be approved. It has to be projects approved by county council. So as long as we do it before third reading, we're good. And then secondly, does it have to be contiguous? Uh, it, it, does, it has to be contiguous or contributing. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Yes. Just one question. Karen? Yes. You said district two. Does that mean anywhere in district two or just in that uh, The projects have to be in that redevelopment project area. I apologize. Yeah, the comment was within the district, but it's referring to the TIF district. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not the school district, within the TIF district. Thank you. I just, I just was concerned about that. Thank you, Rebecca. Good job. I, too, would like to compliment, uh, comment, compliment the town of Somerville, uh, of course, School District 2, and like Bill said, and Jay said, and our county staff for the great job. It's, it's been going on a long time. All right, there's a motion on the oh, Oh, I got to close public hearing. Any other, anybody else would like to speak? Close public hearing. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would move for approval with the amendment 
as recommended to include um, the, the line. So instead of just having um, the Oak Brook Elementary and Middle School as areas where Dorchester District 2 can spend funds, they can expend funds for educational purposes throughout the whole TIF district. That's the, the amendment. Yeah, the amendment would be to improvement to or construction of public school facilities in the redevelopment area. That's correct. correct. Yeah. That's your motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Clarif Any Clarif discussion? Yeah, clarification. Okay. Does that include Trident Tech? We said public schools, but Trident Tech is not a public school. So this will be very specifically for Dorchester District 2 projects. So again, it was site specific with the Oak Brook Elementary and Middle Schools. Now, anywhere in the district, they would be eligible to expend funds for K through 12 purposes. Okay, thank you. And keep in mind, it has to be public school projects. So as you mentioned, Trident Tech does not qualify for that. Oh, so it would, have to be, right. it would have to be a public school pro project in the redevelopment project area. Uh, and I think it was wise of them to, to bring that up because what happens 20 years from now if they have the opportunity to build a new middle school because exactly. they need to build yeah. a new middle school somewhere near there. What happens if a if a old bylaw site comes available and they want to add another career or technical school, you know, vocational school or something like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities. So, I, I, I'm glad they thought of that because that does make it a little bit broader. Any other questions? Uh, there's a, a motion on the floor to amend it. I'll second. 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 Any other discussion? Just real quick. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Vance, and, and just briefly, the partnership that you alluded to, especially with the soccer organization, is there any discussion with the Charleston Battery bringing them to the table, potentially involving them in this as well? Yes, yeah, so they are um, in agreement to partner with us on the, even though they are moving and there's a lot of stuff going on with right. the, the actual semi-pro team, the youth, that doesn't affect any of the youth programs. So yes, they're willing to partner with us on, on some of that and possibly provide funding, which is great because that makes it go, that again makes our money go a little bit further. Um, they, I, and they are willing to work with us to um, bring us uh, some of the connections that they have with uh, companies that do turf and, and the different things that we would need and hopefully uh, those people would donate some of their services or reduce their prices because they know it's a public project. Thank you. Any other questions? A lot of good questions. All in favor of the motion? Six to nothing. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item is a motion to approve roadway <coughs> connection to community road for community road townhouses development. Do I have a motion? So moved. The motion on the floor, do I have a second? I'll second. I need a discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. I, I, I obviously wanted to comment on this because this thing started back in September and we finally got to a point um, where I think the majority of council looked at it and, and, and agreed that we had a road that was um, very much under, um, uh, under any standard county usage guidelines that we were getting ready to uh, impact greatly. Um, I asked early on for what I'll say again, skin in the game. Um, I want to thank Ricky for his work with, um, with Rebecca and the rest of the folks to get this to a point. Um, and just to be clear, if anyone hasn't seen that today, they've agreed to put some bonding in place to make certain. I, I, you ask about DOT people in the audience, I'm going to say it whether they're here or not. I had some skepticism of the DOT actually doing what they always will say they will do. For some reason, that just sticks in my mind that they may have done that to us on a project or two here in the recent past. So the bonding um, to make certain that in case they don't come through, we at least have the ability to improve this road so that we don't negatively impact the residents in there any any greater than what what they would normally be impacted by, by that development. So I appreciate your work to, to make that happen. and. If you were sitting in here, you heard what we asked for. We, we expect in the future these connectivity ordinances, when they impact county roads, you and I as county residents are going to pay for it. Um, now they're going to help pay for it. Um, this is part of that skin in the game that it doesn't just happen because they want it to happen. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Any other remarks? Uh, uh, Mr. Chen, as I can tell you, if, if they don't pay 
Arbor Road, I would make it a trip to Columbia. Trust me, I promise you that. Just and all, I won't tell you what I'll tell them. But anyway, thank you. All in favor? Six to nothing. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Correspondence. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have provided those items as they were received. Thank you. On the guest time, we have a new employee. I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Mr. Greg Lewis, a communication coordinator for Dorchester County. Greg, would you stand up? Uh, come up, Tiffany. Tell us about Mr. Uh, or, or Lloyd. 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 <laughs> Lloyd. Lloyd. <laughs> I heard Greg Lewis. Well, before we first get started, I did want to say thank you to County Council for approving the funding for the communications coordinator position. It did not go unnoticed, and it is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Um, before we get into the introduction, I would say, and I think Mr. Ward and Mrs. Turner would agree with me, that it took us longer than we had initially hoped to fill this position. But once you meet Craig, I think you'll see that it was worth it. When dra drafting the job description, it was important for me to find someone that excelled where I do not. And in my case, that's videography. And I guess I just admitted my own weakness in a live streaming public meeting, so that just happened. Um, but to increase our reach with the public, we need to improve our visual storytelling. And recognizing that and finding the perfect skill set was, was key in this position. So I believe that we found the perfect person for this position, and thankfully he accepted. Craig Lloyd joined Dorch County on Monday, October 28th. So after a full week, he still came back to work today, so that was exciting. Um, Craig earned a Bachelor of Science degree in radio, TV, and film at Indiana State University. In his free time, he enjoys sports, learning guitar, woodworking, and spending as much time as possible with his wife, Erica, and his five-year-old daughter, Olivia. Most recently, Craig worked for Live 5 News. He brings to Dorch County over 20 years of news and sports videography and editing. Most recently, Craig received second place in the, sec in the TV News Photographer of the Year category at the Radio, Television, Digital News Association of the Carolinas. So who better to join the award-winning public information office than an award-winning videographer? So if he will stand, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Craig Lloyd. Welcome, Craig. And I can now say that I know a second graduate from Indiana stole State, my joke. along with <laughs> the Larry Bird, one of the greatest all times in the NBA. <laughs> Well-dressed people think alike, Mr. Ward. That's it? You finished now, sir? Yeah. You ready? <laughs> Mr. Ward, your time, sir. <laughs> Larry, who? Mr. Chairman and Council, I, I have uh, several items for your consideration. The first item is a first reading and referral to the Planning, Development, and Building Committee for a public hearing and a recommendation regarding an ordinance amending the 2018 Dorchester County Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map. Uh, the purpose here is to uh, correct an oversight uh, by adding to the future land use map the Winding Woods property, uh, which is currently an industrial park just outside of St. George. I ask that you give first reading and refer this to the committee. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Six to nothing, Mr. Ward. Next item I have for your consideration is a request for approval to add policy number nine, fixed asset to the Dorchester County financial policies. I will ask that you approve this, and then going forward, this will be added to the budget ordinance for fiscal 2021, as well as the county's financial policies manual, effective December 1st, 2019. Ask for your approval. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six to nothing, Mr. Ward. Final item I have for your consideration is a request for approval to sell 15 benches from the former Dorchester County Courthouse. Uh, the office is annexed, as is now called, to the town of St. George. And I ask that you would approve that sale at a cost of $750 total. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? I have a question. Uh, Daniel, when, when, when will they have to move these benches? They are being stored in the former women's wing of the old jail. So if our timeline continues on track for demolishing that building, that would be around December, January time frame. Uh, however, we're keeping the women's wing as proposed. So just sometime during the demolition process would be preferred. So I don't have to put them in my warehouse. Correct. Yes, Good. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of the motion? Six to nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, next item is uh, early today at, uh, at 5.30, the 
Budget Finance and Purchasing Committee met and we passed a public, we had a public hearing and recommendation for second reading of an ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinance, Dorchester County, South Carolina, to revive Chapter 2, Article 6, Division 3, Section 2-542-B4, and Division 5, Section 2-561-CD, Section 2-564-D, and Section 2-565-D. The purpose of these orders is to amend the section of Dorchester County procurement Ordinance including those that govern the timing of release of sealed bids, response, and delegation of authority, signature authority. And this passed uh, unanimously, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the recommendation of the committee. All in favor? Or six in favor, one absent. Okay. Mr. Chairs? Mr. Chairman, at uh, 545, we had a, a planning development and building committee meeting, um, took up one item that, that required a vote, public hearing and recommendation for second reading regarding rezoning request number 795 by Christopher and Melissa Lane to rezone one acre located at 126 Argosy Drive near Somerville, TMS number 144-01-00-023 from multifamily residential district R4 to single family residential manufactured housing district housing district R1MA and the report from the committee was unanimously in favor. You've heard the recommendation of the committee. Any questions? All in favor? Six to nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chinnis. <clears throat> Fault then we had a committee report dealing with water and sewer committees and we met at 5.55 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, the recommendation for approval of a cost-sharing agreement for Pinewood Crossing Regional Pump Station, and it passed unanimous. You've heard the recommendation of the committee. All in favor? Uh, six in favor, one absent. Any point, Mr. Board and Commission? Hearing none, Mr. Frampton? So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six to nothing. Mr. Frampton? I appreciate councils uh, amending the agenda this time to add an additional item under executive session, which would be a contractual matter uh, dealing with an agreement between Dorchester County and the Dorchester County Water Authority for the exchange of certain service areas. Uh, request that the agenda be amended to include that in executive so moved. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six to nothing. Mr. Frampton? Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six and nine. Gentlemen, we go into uh, executive session. Uh, we can get Mr. Uh, Ward out of here so he can go home and rest a little bit before he makes his trip. All right.
Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Okay. I would move that County Council approve the joint settlement by the Town of Somerville and Dorchester County with the defendant Century Link slash level three in the 9-11 litigation for the sum of $15,000 and authorize the county administrator to execute any documents necessary to consummate the settlement. Further, that with respect to this settlement, as well as the previously approved settlements with the other defendants, I would move that county council, including the deputy administrator slash CFO, be authorized apportioned the net proceeds from such settlements between Dorchester County and the town of Somerville based upon the total revenues received from each defendant by Dorchester County for fiscal year 2018, commencing July 1, 2017 through and including June 30, 2018, and the total revenues received from each defendant by the town of Somerville for calendar year 2018. There's a motion on the floor. Do I have second. a second? There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six to nothing. And before I uh, call for the, that we adjourn, I'd like to recognize, we appreciate you all coming in and staying to the end. Bless you. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to go to sleep twice. But anyway, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Aye. Aye. All right, man.